بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومتبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين أما بعد فنبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يقول العبد مالي مالي إنما له من ماله ثلاث ما أكل فأفنى أو لبس فأبلى أو أعطى فاقتنى وما سوى ذلك فهو ذاهب وتاركه للناس رواه مسلم Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, we're continuing with prophetic principles for life, and we have reached number 25. And as we mentioned previously, the entire deen is the rectification of our perspective. It's the reformation of our hearts and the rectification of our perspective. If the heart is diseased, if the heart is defiled, then this affects a person's perspective. If a person's perspective is tainted, then they will not be able to see their path clearly. An example of this is like you're driving in a car and the window is covered with mud, or you have on glasses and those glasses are covered with fog, or you're looking at the mirror and the mirror has smeared on it rust, you will not be able to see the reflection clearly. And if the window is muddy and it's covered and it's filthy, you will not be able to see the road. If the eyeglasses that you're wearing, they have a specific color on the lens. If your eyeglasses are red, you're gonna see the whole world red. If your eyeglasses are green, you see the whole world green. And you know, if it's one of those you know, eyeglasses that distort, right? I, for example, if I take Hamid's glasses and I put it on, I, everything is going to look like upside down. Mashallah, he's such a professor. His glasses are very high magnified. So if I wear high magnification glasses, or Hafiz Kothar's, Mashallah, he just came. This is another... If, if I wear it, I become completely blind when I put it on, right? Your whole perspective, and this is exactly what happens when a person's perspective and a person's heart, which is the mirror, the heart is the mirror by which we see the world. And the perspective and the fikr is the mirror by which we view everything. If that is tainted, if that is foggy, if that is defiled, then we're going to see the world with exactly that vision. Now, in, in place of the fog, let me give you another example. What if the heart is covered with lust? Take any of, of these diseases of the heart. Lust, what is the meaning of lust? Looking at everything from the perspective of shahwat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us, may Allah ta'ala protect us, but seeing everything from the perspective of shahwat and lowly desires. Now what will that person do? Their mind is always going to go to something bad. Imagine that somebody's heart is covered with jealousy. Hasad. Everything they see will be from the perspective of jealousy. Every motive that they have in life. Every decision that they make in life. If they want to go to get a degree from college, is to show I am something. I want to disprove this person. I want to outdo this person. Or I want to show this person. If a person is arrogant, self-centered, narcissistic, whatever thing that they do, even if they give sadaqah, even if they give charity, even if they pray, even if they do hajj, that hajj, that charity, that sadaqah, that dua, that ibadah, it is tainted and it is... Right? The, the, the reflection of that is then becomes what? It becomes covered with that defilement that is inside of the heart. That's why we have to remove those 
You know, you have to remove that cover. You know, they have the covers that when you put it over the lamp, right, the light turns red. You put it over the lamp, the light turns green. So these are, these are covers that cover our heart. Where the, then the, the, the everything that is emanating from the heart, it's jealousy. Everything that emanates from the heart is pride, is show off, is arrogance, right? It's greed, it's lust, it's desires. So from this we understand is the entire deen in essence is correcting our understanding. Today, our beloved Qurra, who read? He's already gone. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa awladukum an dhikrillah. O you who believe, do not let your wealth and do not let your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ And anyone who does that, he will be from amongst the losers in this world. What do we understand? Allah Ta'ala is rectifying our understanding about wealth. That wealth has the capacity to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. Your children have the capacity to distract you, to divert you from the remembrance of Allah. And, and, and whoever falls into that misunderstanding, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ and then Allah Ta'ala says the cure. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمٌ And spend in the path of Allah Ta'ala before that day comes. Right? Before the day comes that He says, I wish I would have spent. فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ So that I could spend, I wish I could go back to the world and spend and be from the righteous ones. In another verse of the Qur'an, Allah Ta'ala says, what is the wrong perspective that people have about wealth, about money? يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَ وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةِ اللُّمَزَةِ أَلَّذِي جَمَعَ مَالًا وَعَدَّدَ The one who amasses money and he counts it. You know, like the, he pulls out his dollars and he goes, it just feels so good. It, it just relaxes me. Somebody was telling me, when I feel the money in my hands and I just flip it through my fingers, it just relaxes me. It's a stress reliever. When this person said this, it made me laugh because one of the narrators of hadith, one of the teachers of Imam Tirmidhi, he said that when he said, when I hold the dinars in my hand, I feel like I'm hoeing, holding goat dung in my hands. You know dung? Goat droppings. He said, that's when I hold the gold. When I'm holding dinars and dirhams in my hand, it feels like I'm holding dung in my hand. Why? It's because he knows the reality of that thing. He knows that it will not benefit you until you throw it away. The most interesting thing about money, right? The most interesting thing about money is it will not benefit you until it goes away from you. And as long as it's with you, it, does do, it doesn't do anything for you. And if it departs from you, and it goes away from your possession, it is only then that it can benefit you. This shows the disloyalty of money. Never trust something that only when it leaves you, it benefits you. Imam Mumtaz al haqsab rahmatullahi my shaykh, he mentioned a very beautiful poem about gold and silver. I forgot it was, it went something like, رَأَيْتُ النَّاسِ رَأَيْتُ النَّاسِ قَدْ ذَهَبُوا إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا فَأَنْهُ النَّاسِ Right? فَأَنْهُ النَّاسِ قَدْ ذَهَبُوا رَأَيْتُ النَّاسِ إِنْ فَضُّوا رأيت الناس إن فضوا إلى من عنده فضوا ومن لا عنده فضوا فعنه الناس إن فضوا. He says ذهب and فضة. ذهب is gold and فضة is silver. He says رأيت الناس قد ذهبوا إلى من عنده ذهبوا. I saw people going to the one who has money, who has gold. The 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 special effects. You know the special effects. 
in movies they have special effects, CIG or whatever, right? The special effect can't be given in English if you don't know the Arabic. Because Zahaba, Zahab is gold, and Zahab also means to go. In Arabic, Zahabun is gold, and Zahaba is to go. So he said, the Zahab, the gold, will not benefit you until it's Zahab, until it goes. And he says, I see people go to the one who has gold. And the one who doesn't have gold, people go away from him. رَأَيْتُ الناس قَدْ ذَهَبُوا إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا فَعَنْهُ الناس قَدْ ذَهَبُوا And then he says, رَأَيْتُ الناس إِنْ فَضُّوا إِنْ فَضَّ يعني to run towards, to go towards. رَأَيْتُ الناس قَدْ رَأَيْتُ الناس إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ فِضُّوا I saw people running towards the one who has silver. And the one who doesn't have silver, then people run away from him. So point being is, Zahab, the word Zahab actually means to go. Gold in Arabic language is Zahab. And Zahab is the same verb for going. Like if we were to call, if we were to call, uh, you know, in, in, in Urdu, Jana. Jana is gold. Because it jata hai. You know, because it goes away from you. It runs away from you. So, with that being said, Allah Azza wa is telling us the nature of wealth. That, يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَ He thinks that his wealth, when it is with him, it increases his life. This is what it does. This is, the, this is how the incorrect understanding of wealth, when it comes over a person, he thinks that if the bigger my bank balance is getting, the longer my lifespan is becoming. This is an effect that money has. And this is what it does to people. When we see another extra zero in our bank balance, in our mind it's like it added an extra zero in our lifespan. Allah said in the Quran. That's what psychologically happens to us. When there's an extra zero, that means the lifespan has increased another zero. Like if I'm meant to, you know, if I'm going to live maybe 60 years, when as the extra zero comes, maybe 600 years, my life is going to be increased. Allah said, يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَ He thinks that his wealth is going to أَخْلَدَ Perpetuate his life. He thinks his wealth is going to eternalize him. Whereas brothers and sisters, here the Prophet ﷺ tells us to have the proper perspective of wealth. What is that? He says, يَقُولُ الْعَبْدُ مَالِي مَالِي A person says, my money, my money, my wealth, my wealth. إِنَّمَا لَهُ مِنْ مَالِهِ ثلاث. Whereas he only has and he will only benefit from his wealth when it comes to three things. Number one, مَا أَكَلَ فَأَفْنَى That which you eat from it and you finish it off. You went to the store with that money, you bought food, you ate the food, and the food went from you. This is one part. Or the second part of that money you put on your body. You put on your couch, you put on your farsh, right? You put on your carpet, you put in your house. You, you, you wore it and you wore it out. This is the second category of wealth. And then thirdly, أَوْ أَعْطَى فَقْتَنَى or you gave it in charity, and that is the wealth that will benefit you. You gave it in charity, and that is what remained. And there's a very interesting hadith regarding this. The Prophet ﷺ, Faqir came to the door one day, knocked on the door, and they said, you know, give the Faqir something. So, uh, one of the Ummahatul Mu'mineen, there was a shoulder of a, right, a sheep, shoulder of a goat, goat shoulder. So she uh, went and told the faqir, you know, there's nothing. We don't have anything. When the Prophet ﷺ came and said, what did you give? He said, no, we didn't have, or she gave something, but she kept, she gave something, a little, but she kept the shoulder. So then, the Prophet asked, what is left? She said, the shoulder is left. So she said, the, the Prophet said, no, 
the shoulder is not left. Everything you gave is left. And the shoulder remains. Do you understand what he's saying? Meaning what you gave away, that is what actually remained for you. And what you kept, that does not remain with you. Ajib. What is left? The shoulder is left. No, only what you spent is left. And what you kept, this, is, this will be eaten and it will be gone. And, you know, it's, the Prophet ﷺ is not saying we shouldn't eat or you should starve yourself. But he's saying, what of our wealth? What is wealth actually? What is wealth actually? Wealth is a means by which we can by which we can buy our prosperity in the hereafter. Wealth is a means by which we attain progress in the hereafter. Wealth is a means of our purification. Wealth is a means of our elevation. Wealth is a means of attaining closeness to Allah. Spend of that which I have made you the deputy of it. Meaning Allah Ta'ala says, this money is not even yours. I have made you my deputy. I have made you my khalifa. I want you to spend this money on my behalf. Because I am Razzaq. I am Wahhab. I am Mughni. But I made you my khalifa. You are the distributor of my wealth on this earth. So I have given you, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ This is another reality that the Quran is teaching us. That the, the, our wealth doesn't belong to us actually. Subhanallah. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And from that which we give them, they spend. Meaning, this wealth is really not yours. It was a risk from Allah. And in another verse, Allah Ta'ala says, مِمَّا جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَخْلَفِينَ فِي You are mustakhlaf. You are the khalifa. You are the deputy. You are the distributor. You are acting as a vicegerent of God to distribute God's wealth on earth. And then in another verse, Allah Ta'ala says, وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ مَعَلُومٌ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومٌ And in your sum total of your wealth, there is a حَقٌّ مَعَلُومٌ There is a portion that is specifically dedicated and it is not even your ownership. That amount is حَقٌّ مَعَلُومٌ It is a known portion. It is a specific portion that it's not even owned by you. It is the right of for those who are asking and for those who are lesser privileged. It's their haq. 2.5% of your assets don't even belong to you. All of it is the risk that Allah has given you, which He allows you. But then the 2.5% of it, you must what? You must actually subtract that and say to yourself and remind yourself, this doesn't even belong to me. This is not even my haq. Allah said, وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ مَعْلُومٌ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومٌ All of this is doing what? Brothers and sisters, it's reminding us of the reality of wealth. That our wealth is something ajib. Number one, it will not benefit me until I leave it. It will not uh, bless me until I abandon it and I put it where it actually belongs. And of my wealth, there is that which I eat, and then I import, and then I export in the toilet. This is one part of my wealth. The second part of my wealth is what? I wear it on my body, and I wear it out. And then there's the third of my wealth, and what is that? The third of my wealth is that which remains with me. That which I iqtana, that which I capture, that which, I, which remains for me. What is the thing that remains for me? is that which is given in the path of Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَمَا سِوَى ذَلِكَ And anything beyond that, فَهُوَ ذَاهِبٌ وَتَارِكُهُ لِلنَّاسِ It will go away from you and you will leave it for the people. Imagine you have $100,000, $200,000, a million dollars laying there in the bank. You're getting closer to your grave. You are getting closer to your death. How good that would be if a portion of that you dedicate and you make that, right, a waqf and you say, I am from this wealth that I do not want to pass away and leave behind. I dedicate 
one third of that for, for example, this orphanage. I dedicate one third of my wealth for this school for the blind. I dedicate this much of my wealth for this charity foundation. I dedicate this portion of my wealth for this institution. What would that do? That will now go with you in the hereafter. That will travel with you in the hereafter. You will find that. As Allah Ta'ala says, that وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُوا And anything that you spend, Allah will replace that. And Allah Ta'ala, you will find that with you in the next life. So if we want this wealth, any wealth of us that we have, that we find it in the hereafter, remember, every charity that you send is going directly in the bank account of your akhirah. If you were to multiply all of the sadaqat that you gave, all of the zakat that you gave, all of the wealth that you have spent in the path of Allah Ta'ala, count that all together. You know what that's going to be? That is going to be your lump sum of what's in your bank balance of the akhirah. That is what's going to be in your bank balance of the akhirah. And another hadith the Prophet said, anything that is spent in the path of Allah Ta'ala, يَكُونُ الرَّجُلُ فِي ظِلِّ صَدَقَتِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ a person will be in the shadow of his sadaqah and charity on the day of judgment. This is our wealth. This is what wealth should be. I'm so proud, mashallah, of the sister's maktab. May Allah Ta'ala reward our organizers on the sister's side, the teachers, teaching the young kids. The young kids actually put their, they made a little sadaqah box, about 300 and something dollars they, they collected. All of the kids, and they said that, you know, this is our Ramadan charity. Teaching our children charity. Teaching our children to give a portion of their wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Teaching our children empathy. Teaching them compassion and mercy. That okay, you have, you know, you collected $200 for Eid. Okay, how much of that are you going to put in your sadaqah box? Everyone should have a sadaqah box. Other than your zakat. The zakat is fard. Remember, there's, you know, there's, there's no, fard is what you are required to do. But what have you done beyond what you are required? The fard is what we are required to do. But what have we done beyond what we are required to do? This wish and this desire and this habit of remembering that I want to always help someone. I want to always share with someone. And if we understand that, our wealth is what? Our wealth is a source of making, bringing happiness to the heart of someone. I'm saying we need to really change our perspective about money. What is money? Money does not extend your lifespan, number one. Money does not make you invincible, number two. Money does not make you immortal, number three. Right? Money does not make you a better person. Actually, it makes you a worse person. It makes you a lousy person, as is the studies that have been done, psychological studies that have been done. That the most generous people are the ones who have lesser money. And the most stingiest people are the ones who have more money. Look at, they've done actually these, these YouTubers. They do these like, you know, uh, social experiment. They go, and they, the YouTuber himself is like a millionaire. Right? And he's like, can you please help me? I'm hungry. And you know, like, they'll go to a homeless person and the homeless person will like, give whatever they have from the money they've begged. So you, you can have this. And you go to people like they're just, they're coming out of Whole Foods after they bought like koala milk or something like that, right? <laughs> right? Goat cheese and much of koala milk and like, you know, honey from the mountains of Saskatchewan, right? Maple syrup from, you know, Edmonton, Canada or something like And he's coming out with that and he's like, please, I'm hungry. He's like, no, I don't got nothing. Go, get a job. Yeah. So at one, you know, they have, they have that much, you know, capacity to buy such delicacies. But he doesn't have like $5. It's because it, it's an attitude. It gets to a person's head. You know? When I was, the first time I went to Afghanistan, I wanted to tell you guys, it was in 2012. After like 40 years, I'm going first time to my country. 
So it's interesting. And I just wanted to see, like, say, like, what wealth is in the mind of people? Paisa o mal darai dar maghz dar wujud mardom chi yani chi chiz ast chi mana meta yak mana dara ghair az ki yak mal yak chiz maddi ast lekin mal yak chiz ma'nawi ham ast yak asar ma'nawi dara sar zehn o qalb insan it has a spiritual effect on a person i was descending in kabul airport listen to this and the airport there's a bichara guy with like two flashlights like this in it to bichara stadas. The whole maidan is like dark. And he's standing with two flashlights like this, bringing the Boeing 747. And then you see a shadi hall, and it's just like Las Vegas, you know, there's like lights coming out from the, and I said, what is that? What are the lights coming down? It looks like a casino over here. He said, yeah, that's a shadi hall. Hotel RC, the hotels where there is uh, restaurants and they have their marriages, it's like a literally all the lights of the city, right? One million volts is going inside of that restaurant. And the place where it needs it most, where a plane is landing, you have a bechara guy with double A batteries, you know? He's coming, but maybe with his cell phone, he's like directing the plane. Magoftam, look at this mentality of these people. Aklazi mardama saiko. Ananat koshtai mardama. Nishandadan khud. Ke, what does that mean? What is, what is the philosophical meaning of this? Yag yag mano darayi. Barama besyar yag manoi falsafi bud. Ke, we are lost. This, this uh, shadi hall, this hotel, restaurant where people get married, they have stages. People are starving in this country, and the airport is deprived. The airport does not have lights, I'm telling you. It was like very, very, very like subtle flickering lights where this Boeing is landing in the nighttime. And then you see 1,000 volts in these places, and I said, wait, what are these places that are so bright? It's brighter than the airport. You know when you, when you come down in Chicago or you come down in SFO, what do you see? You see the airport from like, you know, miles, right? You could see the lights and it's clear. You don't even need anybody standing with the, you know, flashlights there. I don't know what flashlight is going to do, but, but my point is, is like, it's the, you could see the mixed up priorities of people because the biggest priority for them is showing myself to people. Spending my money to show how big I am. Spending my money to show my comb, right? How much I can do. Whereas half of the entire country is in poverty and suffering from hunger. In those weddings, right? Gallons of food, garbages of food gets thrown out in a place where there's literally people begging in the middle of the road. What is this? Why is this? It's the perspective what wealth is. And this is I don't see that person worthy that I should spend upon him. Why should I spend upon him? If God wanted, God would have spent upon him. Allah has cursed that person. That's why he's in that position. If God wanted, God would have fed him. This is I'm talking about perspective. When we realize that this is not even mine, let me see what Allah has commanded me and how I need to spend. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't spend of our, upon our family. Look what the Prophet said. Doesn't mean get, go and squander your wealth and send it everywhere, this way and that way, to every opportunity that you have. No, the Prophet said the best money that a person can spend is the money that he spends on his family. The greatest charity that a person spends is the, the, the money that you spend upon your own children and your wife and your kids. This is charity. So the Prophet didn't say, okay, give your wealth to everybody. No, there's a, there's a system in Islam, but it's beautiful. The meaning of it is, is that wealth is only that which benefits you. Wealth is only that which is going to bring happiness to you. Wealth is something that brings happiness. Wealth is something that should bring you comfort. I'll give you an example. Why this is important to understand. There's a brother, mashallah, probably like making six figures every year, engineer, everything, you know. 
And just the complaint came from his house. He said, Sheikh, you know, I just wanted to ask you a question. He said, sure. He said, you know, it's really, really cold. But my husband is saying, you know, let's not use the heater. We all wear thick wool socks, wear our parkas, and sit with the blankets. And, you know, with that, we can save money. So we were having an argument. And he's saying, this is israf. We should wear our, you know, leather socks and, you know, our parkas and wear, you know, our blankets. No electric blanket because that's also going to spend electricity. No turning on the heater because it's going to be a big bill. So everybody's sitting inside the house with the house of a person who makes six figures. Okay? And the, the husband and the wife, both of them, they're having an argument, so they asked of me, what do you think? I said, what's the purpose of your money? And what's the purpose of your life? The purpose of your money, if it's not to bring comfort to your life, I said, go and burn that money. Has no meaning. If you're not using that, I, and look, I understand a person is having a difficult time. They're not having a difficult time. They themselves told us. He has in his mind that this is israf. I said, the objective of wealth is what? The objective of wealth is that you have comfort. That you make your life comfortable. If you're, if you're not spending of your money to make yourself comfortable and you're freezing and you're going out of your way to put yourself to difficulty, putting yourself through difficulty, Allah Ta'ala does not give you ajr for putting yourself through self-inflicted punishment. There's no reward for self-inflicted mujahada. If it is easy for you, this is what I said, if it is difficult for you, and it is, then it will be israf. You should save money if it's difficult for you. He said, no, it's not difficult for us. We're just thinking it's israf. I said, this doesn't fall in the category of israf. There was another person, mashallah, computer engineer, another one of the Silicon Valley buddies, right? He had a car that mashallah, when he would turn it on in Fajr Salat, it would wake up the entire neighborhood. When he would turn it on. When he would, he would turn the car on, it would make such a screeching sound that you thought it's like a dinosaur from the previous like, thing. He's come. Now, Godzilla is here. You would get scared. So I said, 4.30 in the morning, in the summer, 5 in the morning. And he has this like 1957 Volvo, or I don't know what, what it was. And if you could see the bottom of the road through the, you know, rusted, and you could literally do the Flintstones car. You know, the Flintstones, you could like literally paddle if the gas runs out. You know that, the Flintstones car? You know, mashallah, in the, you know, in one of the, one of the, he says, Sheikh, this is sadaqah for the masjid, mashallah, one sadaqah, you will write $10,000 check. Young guy. And I said, I don't understand this concept, like, What's this whole, what's this whole like image that you're trying to portray? You know, image of like wearing raggedy clothes, not getting your hair cut, you know, not being presentable, wearing a jacket with 50 holes in it, right? Wearing old shoes with the, you know, the shoelaces look like it's chewed off. Why? Chi jabir. Why are you doing this to yourself? Allah loves that people should see the effect of his blessings on his slave. Allah blessed you with wealth. Don't live so raggedy. You have a car with literally there's rust that there's, you could see the road through the, like, through the bottom of the, of, the, of the thing. I said immediately get a new car. Get a car that makes a person say that this person is an engineer. Why? So I know where I, if I want money, I'm going to come to you. If I want money, I know this guy's a millionaire. I'm going to go get it from him. That's the way you should be. When a person is an alim, he should look like an alim. He shouldn't let, look like a car dealership, like a person working at a car dealer. When you're an alim, be an alim. So when people say, I'm going to ask this mufti sahab a question, he looks like an alim. He looks like a mufti. He doesn't look like somebody who's, you know, working you know, at, at, a, at a random, he's, a, he's a, a person working at a bank or something. Look like an alim, look like an imam. So when people have a question, they know who to go to. This is, this is rectification of a person's understanding. I told him, alhamdulillah, then after that, you know, he got a Mercedes Benz. I said, afari, no shaka janib. Yeah. 
Ask yan eh. Gapang durus tas yan eh. Why are you, why are you doing this? For him, getting a Mercedes Benz is not a problem. And it fits the person's image. What is this image? 50 holes in your shirt, shoe is eaten up by mouse, you know? And like this, like a, Imam Abu, somebody came to Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, and he was wearing raggedy clothes. So when he came, he said, Assalamu alaikum Imam, how are you? I just came to see you. Imam Abu Hanifa pulled a bag of gold and he put it in front of him. He said, this is for you. Hey, I don't need this. I'm rich. I'm a businessman. He said, you don't look like it. You don't look like it. You look like somebody should give you charity. You look like somebody should be, be giving you sadaqah. There's nothing wrong. This is a correcting of understanding. What is money for? Money is for comfort. Who is the one who has made haram the beautiful things of this life? And the zinat Allah, the zinat of life. Remember, on the, on the condition that you're not going into extravagance, you're not doing it for show off, you're within your limit. It doesn't, it, it, it does, he, a person is not going out of his way. This doctor is not going out of his way. And I told him, I said, look, you don't want to get a Mercedes Benz. You don't have to. You don't, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to be flashy. Get a, get a Corolla. And I have, a, have a drivable car that doesn't wake up the entire neighborhood. It's not munasib nis tabar khudat. But mushanat munasib nis. For your status. It doesn't look good on a person like you. This is not, it doesn't fit an image of an engineer. Do you see my point? So this was, this was a matter of, it's, it's all like this mentality and this understanding. Again, I'm not teaching extravagance. I'm not telling you to go out of your way. I'm not telling you to be flashy. But I'm telling you is that it's nothing wrong for a person to be within their capacity, to spend their wealth within their capacity, to spend on their children so their children can be comfortable. People are holding away you know, giving their kids, buying kids their snacks, where the kids are going to school and said, other kids have snacks and I don't have snacks because my mom or my dad doesn't want to buy it for me. What are you doing to your kids? What is this? No, no, israf. It's not israf. This worst is israf in your brain. The kids are going to school, right? And then you're not giving them snacks that they can eat and they see other children, they're eating snacks. Badasta, this is not good. And this is, my point is, what is money for? So that you can look at it in your bank balance and smell it. It's really, it's really uh, giving me, you know, removing my depression. It's relieving my stress. It feels good when I flow it through my fingers. It'll feel better when you spend it to eat from it. Kharchko. Yabna Adam, anfiq, unfaq alayk. O oh, son of Adam, spend. I will spend on you. Allah says. Allah says. May Allah give us the understanding of this. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah.